Okay guys, today we're gonna make pan pizza. One note, some of the things are referred to in, in weights. We really recommend to weigh out your ingredients because it's more precise. Ingredients, one liter of water or a thousand grams. Aquapana water, one of my favorites. It's so smooth. The mineral balance is just so unique. Uh, spring water, it has a, a ver an ancient history. Uh, 1564, the, the Medici family owned the property. And our full packet of pizza crust yeast. Um, we're also uh, looking at adding something a little bit new today. Uh, you'll see us use honey. Any honey will do. This is local honey, so support your local vendors. I use that to kind of get the yeast kick-started. Eichmann's yeast says that you don't need to do that, but uh, I always figure a little bit of sugar gets it going, make sure that this is active. They will also tell you to always check the date of the yeast. 1,500 grams or 1.5 kilograms of bread flour, unbleached. This is probably one of the best flours that you'll use um, that's made right here in America, so hard wheat. Outstanding company, great values, highly recommend. You'll also uh, want to see 50 grams of salt, sea salt. I always use sea salt. I mean, honestly, you could use regular salt, but I, I prefer a more natural and uh, clean ingredient. Red sauce that we made on an earlier video. I'm still portioning out. Smells great. It's made out of San Marzano tomatoes. If those aren't available, you can also crush down some uh, Roma tomatoes or tomatoes that are grown in the same region in Italy uh, that just are outside of the protected area so they don't grow in the, the shadows of uh, Mount Vesuvius and the volcanic ash, which makes it a little bit sweeter and the skin a little bit thicker. Um, you may also want to try San Marzano style. These usually come from California. You can find them uh, sometimes also in New Jersey and other places where they make fine tomato products. And uh, of course, we've also introduced an onion powder and we're also going to add in some garlic powder to really, really round this off. Things also, uh, for those of you who've watched the pizza videos before, you know that we like to use fresh cheese. Here I'm going to use some sliced mozzarella cheese to create a barrier so the sauce doesn't sog up our dough. We're also using some Flora Parmesan grated cheese to finish this thing off. This is the last thing we're going to add, so Parmesan cheese really has a, a, a nice uh, counterbalance that has a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of funk to it, which is good. Let's go check it out. Uh, that covers everything I think we're going to use. And uh, you should also grab a uh, glass of red wine to get you through this thing. So uh, let's go check it out. Let's see what we get. We're about three minutes in, so halfway there. Just wanted to check in on it. Looks great. Cleared the side. This is going to, uh, this is going to be great. That is looking good. This is about 10 minutes of um, overall prep and six minutes of mixing, you know, taking your time. Feels great. At this point, um, I'm going to start warming up the stove. Uh, so I've, I've added some of our trusty Pam here to our pan. We want to make sure that this pan is cool uh, so that we could stretch the dough appropriately and uh, warm our oven up to 400. So let's get this dough out and uh, we'll, we'll roll it up and, and divide it in half. Okay, so I have just a little bit of flour on my hands. We're going to clear that dough hook. Get out. Oh, perfect. And then I, I also set up a plate with flour. Again, you can do this right on a countertop, in a pan, whatever. Uh, I don't like to clean up the mess. I think I've said that a hundred times already. Really what we want to do is take this dough and just kind of stretch it around. Tuck it under. There we go. Once we have that formed, I mean, if we were going to let this rise for a long period of time, we could twist the bottom off. But uh, we're just going to give it a quick, quick flour. Okay, so we're set there. We're going to take our pizza cutter, our wheel. You could use a knife if you want. If you're worried about it sticking, just give it a spray with some of this and before you cut. This should be okay. We're just getting roughly half here. Okay, let's get these separated. Now normally what we would do with Neapolitan pizza or, or any other We'd let this rest, we'd punch it down again, and, and then we'd stretch it. 
Um, but what we're going to do here is just take this right out around here, get this into the pan. We're going to stretch it out here a little bit and then we're going to let it sit for about 20 minutes and then we're going to stretch it even, even further. Be careful not to, to rip any holes in it at this point. All right, so now we're going to wait about 20 minutes and um, check back in, see where it's at, and get our toppings on and get this in the oven. It would be a good idea to go ahead and cover this as well so it doesn't get dry. All right, there we are. Okay, so we, uh, we got in about uh, 10 minutes in. And I stretched this out. Um, the gluten got a little bit stronger, so we're able to, get to start creating a ridge here on the edge of the cast iron, which will be great because it's going to hold in our toppings. Uh, I just wanted to show you that um, if you try to stretch it out and it kind of fights you, let it uh, sit for about 10 minutes. The gluten gets stronger and it's more malleable. Okay, we're in for 10 minutes. Let's unveil it. Looking great, look at that. It's exactly what we're looking for. Now, if you don't want the crust in the center to rise, you could take a fork and poke a bunch of holes in it, or you could play like the finger piano here, it's fine. Just get that, I mean, this is as good as it's getting. And we're in a little bit of uncharted territory here because we've never tried this before. So usually with pizza, we put sauce, then we put on some cheese, then we put on you know whatever other toppings we want. But we're going to do it a little bit differently today. So the first thing we're going to do is grab some sliced cheese. Okay, Sargento is an outstanding brand. It has a uh, pretty robust line of different types of cheeses, um, you know, from Italian and others. Uh, they're from Wisconsin, which is great. And what we're going to do is just take some of these slices out here and put them in. Now, if you're OCD, it's fine to go ahead and, and cut these so they fit round or, or make a, a square pizza. Actually, maybe we could just turn them a little bit like this. How's that? All right, so now we have a base. We have the crust. I have a cup of some extra virgin olive oil, which we're gonna just paste onto the crust on the outside here. This is gonna make it nice and golden brown give it a little bit of additional flavor. It's okay if it kind of goes where it's gonna go. A little olive oil never hurt anybody. Very healthy. Okay, so we have that going. Olive oil and cheese. Now, I've also made some a red sauce. You might remember this from an, an earlier video. Let me just put this down here and you can see it's got good texture. Now I made this sauce for uh, pizza margarita. So it's fresh San Marzano tomatoes, which has that beautiful red uh, color and flavor. We're going to spread this out here a little bit. Um, I did make this sauce a little bit more watery because uh, again, this was intended for use in our high heat wood fired oven, the Uni 3, which you could also see in a video here pretty soon. So I'm just going to get a good amount of this sauce on. You can use something that's a little bit thicker. Um, if you had a chance to, to view the how to make this sauce video, great. If not, we'll, we'll revisit it. Um, I'm also going to add a little bit of onion powder because it's what I like. I, again, just a little bit. And also, a little bit of garlic powder. Spice Island, if you see them in the, in the market, really nice product, high quality. This has such a fresh flavor for a jarred product. And also, uh, what I'm going to do here is add some grated parm, uh, just to give it a little bit of a different, different flavor. And we're just going to shake a little on there. There we go. 
that's great. And uh, for half of this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add in some salami pieces because I'm going to share this. And some folks really like salami. I'm actually going to going to eat that one. Throw that on there. That's it's roughly half. Our oven is at 400 degrees. We're going to go ahead and slide this thing in there. We'll have to remember to use an oven mitt here so we don't torch ourselves. Uh, we're going to let this ride for about 20, maybe 30 minutes at 400 degrees. I'm going to shut this door because I'm letting all the heat out and uh, we'll cover some other things. All right, so we're 20 minutes in. I never recommend opening this up, but it looks like we're going to spin this pan around. We're not done yet. This is probably maybe 30 or 40 minutes it's going to take. It's not as uh, golden as we need, so I'm going to shut this after I spin it and uh, we'll check on it in a little bit. Okay, I've already taken a bite. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. We've been hanging out for too much to lie, but uh, perfect. Couldn't be any better. A uh, nice change of pace from the Neapolitan pizza we usually make or a New York style. Uh, pan pizza can be done in the oven. Looks great. If you like this video, please uh, you know comment, like, share, and uh, we'll be on the lookout. We're going to be doing some new things, some interesting things, and uh, tune in real soon. So, one more bite here. Okay, get out of here. I got to finish this.